Being a new programmer is really exciting and frustrating at the same time. It can be really hard to get up the motivation to learn how to code and then to keep doing it over and over again, day after day for months. So Gabriel, I totally feel your pain. Thanks for asking. And in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my experience on what motivated me and how I stay motivated in two parts. First, as a new programmer learning to code and then as my career advanced over the last eight years. And to put this all into perspective, I'm not an overnight success story. In fact, I had to take two attempts at learning how to code. My first attempt failed and I was not able to keep up the motivation to learn until I hit that point where I felt like I could be successful going forward. Instead, I got kind of complacent in, in where I was at and I was looking at everything I had to learn and I was dealing with the doubts and is this really what I want to do? It's going to require a ton of commitment of time and I, I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my future and so I really struggled to keep up that motivation to learn and things fizzled pretty quickly and it wasn't until quite a while later that things completely changed for me. The environment I was at at work was such that I couldn't really coast anymore. I wasn't liking it. I was feeling a lot of a toxic culture and I was feeling a lot of stress that I was taking home to my family and I basically just needed to get out and at that time it hit a point where I looked at my options and the only straightforward option that made sense is something that I could do and that I could still be able to provide for my family and that I could do without having to go back to school was to go down the path of learning to code and so that's what I ended up doing. So for me, the motivation to really make that step was a lot of pain and suffering. And even then, with that motivation and tailwind behind me, there were days I wanted to quit. There's lots of them. I felt very frustrated. It's like a roller coaster. I would figure something out and I'd be totally excited and everything's great. And then I just totally hit right into a wall of something frustrating and I'd be pounding my head on it for a couple days and... I felt like I'm not even sure I can even do this. And that cycle just kept going over and over and over again. And I'll be honest, it was really, really hard. And I'm someone who really enjoys learning and problem solving. And yet it still really hurt for me because it was like facing this huge mountain of stuff to know and figure out and until I could become competent. And one of the best ways that I can say to really overcome this is to really take things one small piece at a time, set really small goals that you can achieve and those will accumulate over time into something bigger. Don't try to bite off more than you can chew or too much too early because it's just too easy to give in and lose that motivation that you have. And because it's not gonna be easy, there are days where you just have to suck it up and get to work to try to work through these obstacles. And the same thing's gonna happen well into your first job. There's going to be a lot that you have to like overcome and it will feel very discouraging and feel like you wanna quit on days, but you just keep sticking at it. You put your head down and you grind and you get to work and over time, that will become easier. Then as a new software engineer in my first job, I was largely motivated by three things. The first thing that motivated me was the desire to not get fired and the pressures that I was feeling from imposter syndrome and that I really needed to step up and carry my weight and not really knowing where that actual level was, where that bar was for my experience level, just meant that it was constantly pushing higher and higher, trying to become better and trying to you know, prove that I could do the job without getting booted. The next thing that motivated me was career advancements as well as getting praise. It felt good to get good feedback when I was doing a good job on features and I really liked that. I was enjoying what I was building and I was getting positive feedback and I was also looking for ways to try and improve my career because I knew this was just the start. Now, at the time, I really didn't know how big things could go. I mean, I'd heard and read some stuff and everything and I knew that I was at entry level and that there's lots of opportunities to get promotions and raises and I wanted to prove myself and I wanted to get a promotion and the first step for me was I was working contract and I wanted to be able to go on full time at that company. And the third aspect that really motivated me was the money. There's a lot of opportunities to make good money and at the time though, I knew I could increase my salary. I really didn't know how much because I just didn't have a lot of insights into it. So I continued to work towards getting that full-time position and I got renewed for a second year of contract, but not on as a full-time employee because it was a super selective process and there's about 80 other candidates all vying for like two or three positions. And I could have tried to get onto those positions, but then I ended up applying at another company just to see what would happen. And I realized they were gonna pay me significantly more than what I was making. And I was gonna be a full-time employee with lots of benefits. And so I didn't even bother with applying 
for any of those other positions at my first company. Instead, I made that leap. Now, this also set the stage for me going forward with future jobs because it was an eye opener. So right out the gate of my next company, I was working hard. One of my main motivations there was to try and position myself to learn the things that I need to and to do a good job and build up experience that would help me down the road at the job after that. Now, I didn't plan to just bounce immediately and I didn't know when that future time would come for me to make that leap, but I wanted to be prepared and maximize the skills that I was learning and developing during this time so that I could be in a better position to get a better job. And by better, I mean at some place where there's even more opportunities to learn and grow. Throughout this mid-level period of time, I was still motivated by money, but it also became very painfully obvious that staying at any given company it was going to be much more difficult to get those raises. I tried really hard. I worked through things. I went through the promotion process and I actually got a promotion, but it was a ton more work than it was worth because there's just so many hoops you have to jump through in the politics of the company and companies try to minimize how many people they're promoting at any given time. And even if you do get a promotion, the pay raise usually isn't going to be as good as if you were to go to some other company. And that's where it really sunk in the value of going outside of my comfort zone and moving to other companies and not being afraid to do something new. And that if you get stuck in your comfort zone for too long at a company, it's going to hurt you financially if that's what motivates you. Then as I moved into the senior software engineer phase of my career, my motivations largely changed. There's still the motivation to make more money. I always have a game plan for how to improve my finances, but other things became really important to me too. For example, when I'd start interviewing at other companies, even if I got a job offer, I was also paying really close attention to the team culture. Is this the team that I wanna work with? Do these people seem fun to work with? What about the company? Is it a company that's building something that I can be proud of? The actual environment of the place really mattered. And what is the dress code like? I mean, I'm a hats, t-shirt, and shorts kind of person, and I just really don't wanna be wearing slacks and dress shirts or collared shirts to work. I wanna be comfortable and be able to have a more chill vibe at the place that I'm working at. Then there's also the projects. I wanna be working on something that's interesting, but that's also challenging that will help me to grow and develop skills, but it's gotta be something that I enjoy. Now, if it's a really good company I'm at and they move me on to something that isn't fun, which happens, it's just part of being in any career, I'm not gonna be quick to just leave and bounce from that company. I'll hang around around and I'll work on that project and see if things change because sometimes things move around every couple months or six months. But if it looks like it's gonna turn into a long-term thing, then that definitely would affect me and I probably would give up a pretty good job and move somewhere else if I felt like I was stuck on something that I just didn't enjoy working on. And I also wanna be working at some place where people appreciate me and the value that I can deliver and the contributions that I make and that it doesn't feel like I'm just feeding some monster that doesn't care. Most days I really like being a software engineer. Let's face it, it's a good job that pays well, there's good benefits and there's challenging things to work on a lot of times. Compared to other jobs that are out there, we just have a lot of flexibility and we're treated better and more valued. I mean, not at all companies, but there are days where I definitely wish that I was doing something else. Is there something else interesting that I could be doing with my life rather than software? Because it could be really stressful and it is mentally draining to be writing code and thinking through some of these problems all the time. It's kind of like a roller coaster with the highs and lows. You just enjoy the highs while they're there and then during the lows, you grind and get to work until the next high comes. And it's not a career that you really have to worry about there not being enough jobs in the future because there are more complex and more problems that are emerging every day as technology is speeding ahead. And so there's gonna be plenty of work to do, especially for those who are willing to you know, be devs that are going to develop the skills to solve complex problems and that are going to be willing to get outside of their comfort zone and to work on these difficult scenarios, there's gonna be high demand. If you're headed down this path of learning to code and you're starting to feel demotivated, you should just suck it up and get to work. You should also watch this video up here where I talk about my favorite strategies for how to become a software engineer quickly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Lates.